think you should see it in the context of the change that has happened. Um, we were, prior to the war, two internationals. Um, now we are close to being 20 by the end of the summer. Hopefully we will be able to double that uh, within a year. We are having a senior representative um, to be selected. Let me just take this off, I have an echo. Um, who will be, he or she, much more experienced, much more senior, and what does that give you? That gives you access, network, influence, and impact in a different way that has been possible before because of the seniority and where that person has operated before. I don't have a name, um, um, but we will see when, when the person uh, uh, arrives. But I think you will see a, a notably difference in, in the way that the, the uh, representation will act because of that. What's important about that person as well is the role, because it would be the civilian interface for NATO, which means that the person will speak for the mission, the representation in terms of capacity building, interoperability, uh, and much of that long-term work that uh, is going to be happening there. And if you will allow me um, just to say a, a word or two on, on the long-term work, interoperability is boring. So it's all about standards and requirements and so forth. But for NATO, it's incredibly important. And one of the untold successes of NATO dates back from the 1950s, in fact, which was all about setting standards so allies they could work together when they had to fight side by side. And that allowed a mix and match, which um, is important when you have to defend each other, but also when you are doing operations together. And without the standards and the interoperability, we wouldn't have been where we are today. That is not something that happens fast. It's something that takes time. Um, so. Um, it's not when you're fighting a war, that's clear. Everything is short term, you need capabilities immediately. But that long term work is incredibly important because that also is a signal of deterrence in itself. And something that as we move forward, the uh, representation will be focusing a lot on. And, and moreover, that interoperability helps with integration. And the integration helps to getting closer towards membership. So it's part of that whole path. And we spoke earlier about membership, uh, not there yet, uh, close, is it close enough and so on. But you take part in that discussion about interoperability. You're there. So you have the tool actually to enable it partly by yourself as well. So that's also important. I think also you should see the uh, representation and the build up and reinforcement of representation as a political uh, signal, but it's also a signal of commitment. Um, and there is an, an element of deterrence in that as well. Um, there's a lot of effort and resources that are being put into this. Um, so if I look at the sort of outcome and sort of synthesizing a little bit of what my colleague Tanya was mentioning as the outcome coming out of uh, the summit, uh, I see three things um, as an outcome. In the short term, there was a lot of bilateral uh, assistance and capabilities that came into view. Um, in the medium term, you also have the uh, SATU mission, where NATO is going to take over part of the uh, coordination of uh, training and equipment. And one of the tasks there is working to develop future forces, which is very much what the representation will focus on. And that's where interoperability comes in. To, to do this, we need to make sure that we have those elements in place. That's long term. So you have short term, medium term, and long term there. And there is a strong signal of political commitment from allies in doing that. Thank you.